Hello everyone, Merxerain back again to continue our Enigmatica series. We are very close to obtaining our drawer controller. If uh, if you remember, we we really set up the whole room over here to get more of this pneumatic uh, craft stuff going, so we could get the new pneumatic craft table in our background there, which would allow us to, you know, use it for different things. If we look at the drawer controller. Where we left off, we uh, we obtained this coated machine frame top, so we will need to compact it into a rough machine frame, which we're going to then have to use in our assembly controller to turn it into a machine frame, which finally will let us get to this craft, and finally, 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 the drawer controller. So we're going to start off with that today, and then after that, right... We know that we need destruction cores for refined storage, so I think we're going to look a little bit at uh, getting the the Icker B set up. Before we actually touch on the bees themselves, though, we will be diving into this is Tinker's construct here, and uh, specifically we need the smeltery. We're going to smelt down like some zombies or something maybe cows i don't know in order to get some blood we need blood in order to mix with the liquid slime bee i think is what it is or maybe it's just liquid slime we'll get there when we get there something i would like to show you about this building this is our villager breeder which i have shown off before however i have done some upgrades to it so if we look at the front, we can see, ooh, there's now a fancy little space over here. It's like even got a nice little garden and everything. We're going to enter in through the gate and show off what it looks like. Aha, we see that there are a bunch of villagers already sort of like ready for use in here. We can grab them in our bottles when we need them. There's another spot here. Um, hmm. Unfortunately, he didn't get sucked up. I wonder... I wonder how that happened. That's all right. We'll be able to fix that, no problem. But just to give a, a small reminder of how this works, these guys breed. They uh, they end up having the little child who goes down there. That puts them in the water stream. When they grow up, they are supposed to have their head in the water here. I have a feeling what happened is uh, kind of got stuck in the fence gate. There's like a, a fence gate down there. But we have automated this system a bit. Okay, how did we automate it? Well, up on the roof, we have an industrial infrared entity detector. And if I right-click anywhere on it, okay, we can see that the sensor range is 4, and the entity threshold is now 7. I actually want that to be 6. That's where I wanted it at. It doesn't really matter too much. But when it senses that you have 6 entities, and specifically their villagers in here, it will shut the system off. We're going to just kind of nudge this guy, see if we can get him to pop up into the water. Hmm. Okay, we'll just grab him with our shrinking device. No big deal. Put him down, like, right there. Okay, so now he's big. Lots of guys in here. Let's take a look at what's actually happening. If I grab out my special teleport axe... And then we go over here and get up into the ceiling. So I don't have any, like, fancy roof access or or top-level access, although maybe I should. Uh, but what's happening here, right? So, this... Oh, they somehow got carrots down there. That's probably my fault for my magnet. Okay, well, anyways, our sensor is on the other side of this holly plank, and when it detects that there are six entities down there, specifically villagers, it outputs its signal on this line... And if we follow this line, it comes all the way over to this sticky piston. This actually disables the breeder because the uh, the guys that are in there can no longer see the beds. And if they can't see the beds, they, uh, they cannot create offspring. You'll see that there is one additional line right here, too, which we're going to take a look at right now. Nope. Back down. This here is an illuminated block inverted, which means when that's giving off a signal... This block will not be lit up to indicate that the breeder is off. However, if I come back over here, and we're just going to say they're allowed to have more than... If I can get in there. Oop. Yeah, 
This is gonna be a pain. Okay, here we go. So if I say seven, eight, there's allowed to be eight. We heard the piston go up. If I come over here, we will see the light is now on. The breeder is working. Let's go ahead and set this back down to six. I just don't want to have like too many entities in here uh, when I don't need them. What are we gonna do with those guys? I'm feeling like we want to create guild halls, right? That's going to be really cool. We set up one sort of large building and throw all of our clerics in there. Throw all of the masons in there, you know, have them be dedicated for their job. That would be really cool. And there is actually a block that allows you to interact with all traders in a certain radius. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that block. And it's going to, it's going to be active because I have a villager infestation still in my house. But it's this guy right here, the trading post. So if I click on this, it's going to show all of the villagers who are in the area, which is all the ones in my house right now, and all of their trades. This is going to be super handy. So if we set up that uh, just mason building and put one of these in the center, we'll get all the mason trades. Set up a farmer one and put that in the center, get all the farmer trades in one spot. We don't have to go around and click on each individual uh, tr villager. All right, we just made our machine base. This is going to be part of the craft that we need to do for our drawer controller. This took some reinforced stone slabs, some invar nuggets, and one of these uh, PCBs, I think is what they're called. We're also going to need to get two invar plates, real quick and easy. And then we will combine that with, I just have this other backpack here, with our rough machine frame top. And that is going to let us make the rough machine frame. In looking at the craft for the rough machine frame, we can see that we need to compact it over top of one of our blaze burners. So we have a compactor here, but we do not have the blaze burner here. So we have two options, right? We can either go create a new, a new blaze burner to set it in here, or we can convert our blaze burner over there, that's our mixing station, to do this. I'm actually leaning towards getting a new blaze burner, so let's do that real quick. We just so happen to have a waystone location set up in the nether from many episodes ago. Right here, blaze spawner. Let's go. Now then, you just right click again on a blaze, but I believe you can also right click on the spawner itself. Yep, we just got one. That's all we had to do. Let's go back. All right, let's go ahead and throw all of our crafting materials in here. With our blaze underneath, we should just give him a piece of charcoal and this should work. <clears throat> and this should work. What are we missing? Okay, <laughs> the bit that I forgot about, the rough machine frame top is not actually this. This is a coated machine frame top, which we have to coat with plastic in a TPP. And we also need to have a high temperature. So let's go see if we can get that going. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to put a bucket of lava back here and see if we can get that up to the right temperature. We're also going to put our plastic in there and get our rough machine frame top ready to go, right? So this does require us to have four and a half bar of pressure, which means we cannot use our vortex tube because if we do, our pressure is going to go down too far. So hopefully this allows us to get enough heat. 1600 is quite a bit. We'll find out soon. Hmm. Well, that turned to obsidian real fast, so I think we're going to need more lava. We have nine more buckets of lava to see if uh, we can get this going or not. It's going to be kind of close, I have a feeling. Now then, uh, I didn't really think of this, but we might be able to utilize this. We put like a second bucket of lava there. It might go faster. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put our thermal lagging back on the back of here. It would appear we cannot get high enough with just lava. 
I've been looking around, and I think our solution might be a fuel wood heater. This is from Mechanism, however. But it doesn't look like it takes any of the crazy Mechanism parts, right? So we need a machine frame, which we can make. We've made those. We need more kiln bricks, which I actually think we might have four extras in storage. And then we need two kilns, which smooth stone, mud bricks. This is doable. This is real doable. And then it uses... Um, like coal or whatever you burn. So, let's go ahead and give that a try now. Well, unfortunately, I was not able to find any kiln bricks, so I'm gonna have to go through our sequenced assembly again with blast bricks, mud bricks, and construction paste with the smoldering lapis lazuli compound. I will do that off camera now. We now finally have all the necessary ingredients. Craft our fuel wood heater. So let's go ahead and get that going. And it says wood, right? Fuel wood. But we're going to try charcoal. Get back over to our pneumatic factory here. And I think we're just going to set it right back in the back again. Just to double check, we have our rough machine frame top and we have the plastic in there. So if I set this fuel wood heater in... And then I put in one piece of charcoal. It's going up pretty quickly. Okay, and then we can see how much fuel is left, and we can see the temperature that it's outputting. All right, all right. Go ahead and get ourselves, like, another two charcoal in there, because this is going to run out pretty quickly. This fuel wood heater is uh, infinitely cheaper just burning charcoal than really uh, this whole setup is if we use the vortex tubes. So I might want to make a secondary one of these to set over here on our refinery controller, right? That way we can have the refinery controller uh, processing this stuff almost all the time and not worry about our pressure going down because these vortex tubes really eat into your pressure. So we're getting close. We're uh, at 1,100 degrees Celsius now. Will we make it? I think we will. I, we can definitely see it's going up slower now. We might run out of charcoal. Who knows? We're, we're going to find out. We can easily run back and get more. We have uh, an infinite supply of that, basically. We're down to two reserve pieces of charcoal. But I think we're going to make it. Here it comes. We're going to hit it. 1600. Our craft should begin now. Uh oh. There it goes. There it goes. That's the problem. Not enough heat. Okay, the heat is. Uh... I don't understand why it said not enough heat. We definitely have enough heat there. Let's take a look over here. I think we're going to let that last piece of fuel burn, just to make sure. I don't really care uh, if we lose one piece of charcoal. Well, actually, uh, we'll take it out, because I don't know if maybe you can overheat these machines. But we did get our coated machine frame top. That is the piece we needed. Let's go right back, real quick, to our craft. We have our machine base, we have our coated machine frame top, and our two invar plates. Everything is now in there, and all we need to do is we'll use that last piece of charcoal right now. This should... Yes, there we go. Everything is peachy. Ding. Rough machine frame obtained. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now we can actually... We should be able to make this right now. Let's go ahead and do so. Okay, back over here. At our fancy assembly controller, all we need to do is take the drill out, put the laser in, and let the machine, the rough machine frame, go into the box where it can pull from. So I did put two speed upgrades in here. We can see we can actually put a max of 10. It's still pretty slow, so I think we will probably want to do that sooner than later. Ooh, look at that. Quest completed, RF tools, machine frame, another RF tools one, and another machine frame. I'm sure that quest was, like, all over the place, right? So, in crafting that machine frame, we have completed this line of our computer science section, which then unlocked 
the nuclear physics. We're getting close to the tech portion of the gates being complete, although there is still a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do, and then all the magic, of course, as well. Plus, we, uh, we're not really done in here yet, either. Two smart chests obtained. Drawer controller, we're getting real close. We're gonna make this processor right now. This uses our uh, fancy machine frame that we just crafted as well and some logic units. Processor obtained. I figured that was gonna be a quest. And then what do we need? We need any kind of drawer and we need a bunch of aluminum sheet metal. And I'm, I'm gonna bet we don't have any of the aluminum sheet metal. We do not. So let's go ahead and make that now. We just need aluminum plates to do so. Eight aluminum sheet metal should be enough. Let's go ahead and get this craft going. The drawer controller has been obtained. This is a big moment because we could, at this time, restructure our whole storage system here. I think we're going to hold off on that. This current storage system works for what it is. And I actually think we'll probably leave the storage system alone. I have, um, I have thoughts, right? Our refined storage system that's going to become our new storage system is going to need a lot more space. This here works for now, but since we're going to, instead of using a lot of these, I mean, we're going to need overflow chests, right? We need random spots for saddles or chest plates and, and whatever, right? We do need overflow chests. However, we're going to heavily, heavily make use of storage drawers, and that's going to take a lot of space, especially if we do, like, the single drawers and not the two-by-twos. It's just going to take a lot of space. So we don't have enough space in this building. This building has suited us well for everything we've needed it for so far, and we're probably not going to be done with it anytime soon. But my thought is we will create a much larger one. And I'm kind of thinking off over there, right? We're going to expand a lot of our automation and buildings and stuff over here. You can see I'm doing a little planning for a future project right here. But I think our storage is probably going to go over this way somewhere. And that's going to become our new hub, our new base of operations. And it's going to be a little further away from the villagers because we need that. Downstairs, we can see our board, drawer controller, and we needed plastic sheets. Well, we got those plastic sheets quite a while ago, but now we have the drawer controller. That has been checked off of our list. So, we're, we're close to being able to make this storage bus, but we need to do some things before that. And one of those things is the destruction core. That is the prime item we need for a lot of our refined storage setup. So, we're going to have to do that next. The destruction core that we need here, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It uses our pressure chamber, it uses a corporeal spark, we're not going to look at that yet. Basic processor, which we have actually made these in the past. The ichor crystal, this is the bit, right, that we need to focus on. We can blast in the furnace, enrichment chamber, or even bulk blasting, ichor balls. These ichor balls can come from multiple different sources, uh, blood shrooms in garden cloche, which we... I'm not going to make any of those right now. We could go a little bit into magic. I know this is a very near sort of situation, the altar, but it is a crimson altar, which I think has to be in the nether. There may be special things there. We could go this way, and this could potentially be the faster way, but let's go for the more regenerative way, and that's going to be the bees and the centrifuge. So, right, if we can get ichor honeycombs, we can easily process them into ichor balls. That's going to be real simple. It's also going to give us processor bindings, which are never, never a bad thing to get. So, how do we get an Icker B? Well, if we were to go down the path and see, oh, here's the Icker B, oh, there's nothing here to tell us how to breed it. However, it does tell us you can use the smeltery for casting more than mere tool parts. Oh, all right. So, let's actually look at the filled bee jar. This is what you need to make. In the casting table, off of your smeltery, you need liquid Icker B which you get from alloying blood and liquid slimy bee together. So, of course, we need to be able to get liquid slimy bee, which, hint, hint, I may already have slime bees. We'll take a look at those later. The, the core thing that we need to do is get ourselves a smeltery setup from Tinkers. 
So we're going to start that. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to finish that in the episode, but let's at least take a look at the quest log. We need to get down to the smeltery, so we're going to have to come over this way. This one is just a check mark talking about tinkers, really. Check, we'll take the XP. Patterns and you, so we're going to have to make ourselves a pattern. Patterns are real easy. Planks and sticks. I think we're going to make a handful of these because we're going to use them for a bunch of stuff. Pattern obtained. That gives us the materials and you book, which is nice. We're going to go ahead and uh, before we even do anything else, let's go and get our Akashic Tome. Let's just double check that it doesn't have a materials and you book in there and I don't see one. So if, uh, if you didn't know, right, you can take your Akashic Tome and you just combine it with a new book. Well, how about that? Um, normally, you can take a book and combine it with the Akashic Tome to, like, throw it in here. I still think you probably can do that. However, I am wondering, is there a limit to how many books that you can put in here? We actually have a full set of five rows. Maybe this is a hard limit to how many books can be in this book. So for now, we're going to ignore that. The next quest is the puny smelting book, which is grout and a book. And then let's go ahead and look at the next one, mighty smelting. This book is a seared brick and another book. So we should actually be able to make both of these at Tinker. And I'm going to do, I think, smelting. Yeah, here we go. Puny smelting. And then uh, mighty smelting. Obtained, obtained. Let's go ahead and uh, get our boxes. Common takers loot. That gave us flint shurikens. Interesting. The mighty smelting book. Uh, quest reward is epic. Copper can with one ingot of molten terra steel. Ooh, that is a magic sort of metal, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and do the grout quest. We only needed eight of those. That's completed. This one will give us eight more and a rare tinker's box, which, which I didn't see what it was. Oh no. Oh well, it's not gonna be the end of the world. The smeltery controller. Okay, so this tells us that we need these items. However, uh, from past experience with tinkers, I know that we're gonna need normal seared bricks as well to form our multi-block uh, construction. I haven't played with this version of Tinkers before, and these are new blocks. The Seared Drain and the Seared Chute. Well, technically the Drain isn't, but they look new, they look different. And the way that you get the Smeltery Controller may be new, or this may just be part of the Expert Pack, I'm not sure. But it does tell us that we need to use a Casting Basin, right? And put Molten Copper on a Seared Heater. I don't know if that's entirely true, if we need to use the Basin. Or if we can do it just like in the world on the ground. But we're going to have to find that out now. Alright, so we're going to make ourselves a handful of these seared bricks, which come from, again, seared bricks. But the seared bricks you make in the induction smelter with gravel, clay ball, and any kind of sand. Go ahead and get that. You know, I don't want to do 28. I think I only want 27 to start off with. There we are. Let's go down. This is a temporary location. I have taken out some of the floor here where we can set up our smeltery. And we're going to make it, the internal is gonna be three by three. These are gonna be our walls and everything. Something like that to start with. And then we're going to need to get our smeltery controller and our inputs and outputs. And I'm going to put some like windows in as well so we can see. In the tech tier one, here's our seared heater quest, right? And it does say melt some of the molten copper in a magma crucible, which we have, and then pour it over the seared heater. 
but we're gonna we're definitely gonna have to figure this out I don't know we might try it in the basin first we'll see how this works but it does tell us we need four ingots worth so we'll let that melt down now get our casting basin we need our seared heater Seared heater, we're gonna place it directly in. So we can see it's there. Now the real question is how do we pour it in? We'll uh we'll be figuring that out pretty soon here. Um this is not a whole bucket's worth, which might be a problem. We'll try our basic fluid tank here. You can see we have now taken out 576 millibuckets of the copper. Let's see if we can just right-click it here. No, that, that took our item back. Okay, we might have to try something fancy with fluid pipes. Yeah, we'll just uh, get that there. Hey, I'll put one up there. Seared heater back in place. That's not where I wanted it. Let's uh, let's see if we can put it on top. And if we put the extraction module in, there it goes. I believe that's working. Perfect. Smeltery controller obtained. We're gonna set that right there. I partially did not expect that to work. We need ourselves a drain. We're also going to need a faucet. See, like, these channels are also new. Never used those before. There's a lot of new stuff in the mod. We'll place our drain right here. Okay, so this looks to me like it's probably angled in the right spot. We will put a faucet on the front. So this should let us uh, drain things, you know, metals, out into uh, our basin. And you know what? It hits me. We're going to want a second one with a table. Here's the casting table. ourselves another drain as well. Now we need a tank to store the liquids in, and by the liquids I mean the lava. Let's go ahead and look at this quest line here. Right, this said, oh, this wanted us to craft four seared glass and then one Seared fuel tank, so maybe we'll, uh, not maybe, we're definitely going to want to complete the quest. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a chute, two more seared glass, and the fuel tank. And we're always not having enough of the seared brick. There's our extra two pieces of glass, which uh, we'll probably need to break the other ones to get them back. The seared fuel tank. Oh no, I... Okay, good. Whew. I thought I pulled it out right before the glass got there. We didn't. And then uh, we also needed the... The something. Was it the chute? It was the chute. This is for automation purposes, which... Um, we're not going to actually set up the automation purposes now, because this is a temporary location. Okay, let's see, is this actual glass or can we get it back? Good, we got it back, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so it's uh, showing us this really cool like red block, I think, to show us that that's where we need to actually finish our multi-block. I've never seen this before either. If we put that in, 
I think we have a smeltery. This is awesome. We have done a lot of work today and made a lot of progress. This uh, smeltery behind me is testament to that. Even though we could have gotten this earlier, uh, we just didn't need it. But now that we need it, we have it and we're going to use it for, I'm sure, quite a few different types of crafts. Eventually, I do foresee us having a uh, sort of tinker's building and there will be a smeltery there. We will probably have, I think it's called a forge or uh, no, a foundry. It's called a foundry. It's a different type. It doesn't allow alloying. We'll probably have them both set up and we'll get some automation and all that sort of stuff going. But that's not today. Uh, in the next episode, right, we are going to play around with getting Icker Bees in order to get the destruction core, which you can see on the back wall that we need, right? But it's not just that. I do also think what we should also get into, right, is if we look at our resourceful bees, we can do these now. We can upgrade our hives. We could make our bee output so much greater than it is currently. But there's also apiaries, and I've been told over and over again that I need to get into the apiaries. So the next episode, I think we're going to go ahead, get our Icker Bees, we'll do that first and foremost, and then we're going to play around with apiaries, learn how they work, see how, um, how we can utilize them in different ways, and if we decide we do want them over, say, Tier 4 Hives, we might craft a building, like a, a whole new bee setup just for it. But for now, I do really appreciate you continuing this journey with me. This is Merc Serene, signing off. <laughs>